Hey guys, this is John with Far From Standard Tutoring. In this video, I'm going to talk about chairs. No, not that chair, Rohan. Ah. <laughs> okay, so chairs are six-membered rings here, okay? And we can, um, this video is going to be emphasis on how to draw chairs and then going to KEQ and see what conformer is the better conformer, okay? And looking at which one is more stable as well. So the first thing we need to do is learn how to draw a six-member chair um, like they have over here on the right, okay? So it's kind of tricky at first. There's a couple ways you can do it. But the way I'm going to explain it is by using the numbering system here and then just using a way we call mountain valleys, okay? So the first way you need to draw is to draw this out. You're actually going to be looking in the plane, okay? So you're visualizing this two-dimensional, but you're visualizing it 3D so you can see the relative positions of everything and what they call axial and equatorial positions of the attached atoms or groups, okay? So the first thing you do is I've written out here this um, plane here. This is going to be the, in the plane of the board, okay? And you'll see in a second when I draw out the chair what that means, okay? So what you first do is you draw out the actual back part here. And that's just doing it like this, okay? You start to do mountain, valley, and then end with a mountain there. Okay, it's easier if you start lower um, than the, the middle of valley here. And then what you do is you just do the reverse, okay? So we did mountain, valley, mountain. We're going to go back and do valley, mountain, valley, okay? And that's our chair. Now what we need to do is we need to categorize each of these positions in the chair, right? There are six positions. I, I've written out the numbers here, okay? So let's just do that for convenience again. So this is atom one, two, three, four, five, six again, okay? So we have differences in locations, like in height and depth of the positions in this chair here, okay? So at the top, this is called the head of the chair. Sometimes you'll hear that it's called the headrest or footrest, whatever, but we can just call it the head. And this is the foot down here, okay? So what we draw is because each atom here is tetrahedral, we need to follow that rule that everything is 109.5 degrees evenly spaced, okay? So to do that, we draw the initial bond up here, so it's up, right, the head. And then down at the bottom, we draw down, okay? So this is our down position and our up position. To finish it off and make everything 109 and happy, right, we just draw out to the right there. So it looks like a tetrahedral, right? Everything is 109.5 degrees away from each other. Same thing at the foot, we just draw up like that. This is what the, is referred to as equatorial position, this is axial, okay? Axial, equatorial. Now there are going to be two other positions and that are going to be down, and then two other that are up, okay? The middle four atoms here, all right? So positions two and six here, these are also going to be down, okay? Because they are down below the other two atoms there, okay? So they get the down um, axial. These ones get the up axial, all right? And then we'll, just to finish it off, you just need to point the equatorials to either the foot or the head, okay? So since these two, two and six, are on the side of the head, okay, you point the equatorials toward the head. Same thing for the side that are on the foot side, okay? You're going to point the equatorials towards the foot, all right? And that's how you draw out the tetrahedral positions of each atom there, okay? So we, let's just recap here. Um, the even numbers here, they all have down positions, okay, down axials. The odd numbers, they all have up axials, okay? And then you just fill in the equatorials to make it all look like it's tetrahedral. So let's go with a quick example here, and then we're going to move on to two conformers um, of a chair, because with a chair you always have two conformers, okay? And then you can write out each conformer, and then find a KEQ by the relative stabilities of each atom in the chair, and then see what it's going to be at an equilibrium, okay? So again, we have, our, we have our example here. Let's just draw it out like we did. Mountain, valley, mountain, and then back, okay? You'll get good at it over time. It's kind of tricky at first. So our first position here, we're going to name this position 1. It'll be 1 up here. We need to draw out the CH3 down, okay? That's our equatorial. So CH3 is there. Now, uh, positions in the chair that don't have substituents, okay, that only have H's, um, you really don't need to draw those in, okay? They're not important. But if they do have something, you do need to draw the H in there, okay, along with the substituent. So our second position has nothing there. Our third position, right, this is the alcohol, okay? So again, this is one of the middle four. This is on the footrest side, okay? We're going to draw up and then down towards the footrest, okay? So wedge, wedge is above the board, okay? So it's also going to be in the above position, so above the plane of this board, right? So the OH comes off of that axial, all right? Position four, we have nothing there, so we're going to go to position five there. Same orientation, okay? Since it's above here, it's going to get that axial, and then since it's on the side of the foot, the equatorial is going to be pushing towards the foot, all right? And it's kind of hard to see here, but the BR, since it's um, dashed, it's going to be below the plane, okay? So I guess moving this and this together, we have this black line to indicate the plane, okay? Atoms one and four here on this example are in the plane of the board. Same with it is here, okay? These atoms are in the plane of the board. What's below that plane is actually coming out. What's above that plane is actually going into the board, okay? So it's a way of visualizing this three-dimensionally. So let's move on to our last example here. 
and then we're going to rank these based on their stability and find the KEQ, okay? So we have this example here, we have three substituents, all right? And I've already written out both conformers. Now again, remember for chairs, there are two confirmations that you can be looking at, okay? So again, we have our positions drawn out, only the positions that have substituents, okay? And now we can rank these based on how many equatorial and axial positions there are, okay? So the first one we have, CH3 is axial. So we have one axial, we have another CH3 that is also axial, so we have two axials, all right? Two AX. And then our last substituent is actually equatorial, so we have one equatorial, all right? Now we need to know, well, which one is actually going to be more stable, okay? It turns out that things that are axial are actually less stable than if it was equatorial, okay? Axial is bad for stability. And that's because that it needs to go through, a t it needs to use a lot of energy to get through that axial conformation, okay? So we just need to know that more stability corresponds to having substituents that are equatorial, okay? So in our second conformer here, we have two things, two axials that are, not, that are no longer axial, okay? It's a gain of stability because they're no longer axial, right? This was axial, now it's equatorial, okay? This was axial, now it's equatorial. So our two things that were axial are now equatorial, and then our one, our one substituent that was equatorial is now axial there, okay? Oops, axial. So you'll see that we change stabilities here, okay? And now remember, KEQ is a way of looking at the products or the reactants and seeing what is actually going to be there in uh, equilibrium, okay? So since we're going from things that have more axial to more equatorial, okay, it looks like the right side is going to be more stable, okay? That means the KEQ is going to be greater than 1, all right? And KEQ also can correspond to the Gibbs free energy, okay? So you can also say that the Gibbs free energy is less than 0. And this means that the free energy is uh, apt to go towards that reaction, to go towards completion, okay? So the right side more stable, that means KEQ greater than 1, and this reaction is likely to go towards the right, okay? So in uh, equilibrium, you're going to have more of that conformer on the right. And that's just based on uh, the stability of the atom positions, right? You have no longer two axials, you have two equatorials, okay? So the side that has more axials, less stable than the side that has more equatorials, okay? So, chair confirmations, you can look at what conformers look like and then relate that to KEQ and what is actually going to be more stable, okay? Thank you for tuning in to uh, the chair confirmation video.